Over the last two or three days, some of you might have been hearing on the news about some violent confrontations in Berlin. And perhaps you'd like to know a little bit more about the backstory to this, who was involved and what caused the trouble. I am going to be as objective as I possibly can about this, but it is very difficult to be completely neutral. I fully expect some of you to disagree with some of the things that I say, and that is perfectly fine. I encourage you to leave a comment, that's what the comment section is for, but I would ask that you remain polite and show some respect to those whose opinions differ from your own. Let's please keep this civil. So with that in mind, let's get started. The property at the centre of this is in the eastern part of central Berlin, in Rigaierstrasse, house number 94, often referred to simply as Rigaier 94. It's one of a few houses occupied by left-wing activists. Before Germany was reunified, West Berlin became a magnet for young people seeking an alternative lifestyle. This was because, for example, residents of West Berlin were exempt from military service, which in West Germany at the time was all but mandatory. Also, there was a lot of cheap housing available because living in half a city with a wall around it was not a very attractive prospect for most people. Then came reunification, and with it, sudden access to empty properties in former East Berlin. These were often properties that were badly in need of renovation before they could actually be rented out, and this attracted property developers and speculators on the one hand, and on the other, squatters looking for a place to live. Riga 94 was one of those properties and was very quickly occupied by squatters. However, they did manage to negotiate with the owners and legitimise their presence there and were able to sign proper rental contracts. And for the next five or six years, they were allowed to stay rent-free while the property was being renovated and brought up to more modern standards. But these are very radical activists. We're not talking about people who just marched down the streets calling for a communist revolution. These are people who completely reject the authority of the state and are prepared to use violent means in what they see as some sort of war. And so they often clashed with police. Now, the police said that they were investigating crimes or answering complaints about the noise. Residents said they were defending themselves against attempts by the state to evict or at least intimidate them. Meanwhile, the property was acquired by the Jewish Claims Conference, an organisation that helps get compensation and restitution for Jewish victims of persecution in the Third Reich. Riga 94 had originally belonged to Jews, but had been Aryanized by the Nazis. From there, it, along with some other properties in the same street, was bought by property speculators, and it very quickly became obvious that the new owners were not interested in honouring the rental contracts. And so, over the next few years, there were repeated attempts to evict the residents. Here's where it becomes difficult to be objective. On the one hand, many neutral observers, such as local residents not connected with the activists, have reported unnecessarily heavy-handed tactics by the police. On the other, the residents themselves don't seem to be particularly interested in a peaceful solution. For example, at one point a charity organisation called the Edith Marion Foundation offered to buy the property and grant the residents leases for 99 years, but the residents declined, saying they preferred to fight on. It didn't help that, in an investigation into several counts of arson, a police raid found Molotov cocktails, pyrotechnics and similar paraphernalia. In 2014, the building was sold to another new owner who was able to remain anonymous. In 2016, there were more clashes with police, leading to angry demonstrations and some acts of vandalism and arson. So this brings us to the latest events. They were sparked by a fire safety inspection, which was deemed necessary because there had been reports of things like exits being kept permanently locked, rubbish piling up in communal areas and other hazards. A court ruled that the residents had to grant access to the fire safety inspector, although not to the owner. The residents then announced that they would comply in allowing the inspector and only the inspector access to the building, but the inspector himself insisted that he needed police protection. And so we got this confrontation. Hundreds of police arrived in riot gear. The residents had barricaded the street and set fire to the barricade. As the police moved in, they were pelted with stones. On the 17th of June, the police managed to gain access to the property using 
angle grinders and bolt cutters and were attacked with fireworks and paint and the residents let off at least one fire extinguisher. According to the police, about 65 officers were injured. However, it's important to remember that in Germany, when reporting casualty figures, things like tear gas in the eyes, smoke inhalation, even just shock, count as injuries. Once the police finally managed to gain access, the actual inspection apparently passed off without further incident. And according to the news websites the following morning, the inspector found no serious violation of any fire safety regulations. Following this, there was a demonstration elsewhere in Berlin of about 2,000 people in support of Riga 94, which according to official sources was not peaceful, but didn't escalate. And that's it. Now, obviously, I have had to simplify a lot and leave out a lot of information, but I hope that I was able to give you some sort of insight into the background to this story. And I'll leave it up to you to decide who you sympathize with. As I said at the beginning of the video, I welcome all comments no matter what your stance on the issue. Do you think this is left-wing terrorism, persecution by the state in the name of big business, or something else? All I ask is that you disagree and argue civilly and with respect for one another, no matter how passionately you disagree.